All right, so we all know Mr. Kyle is going through what looks to be a divorce, but let's see how he's looking at it, right? So we're going to cover these two, two items, his motion and his petition for non-OCA. And oh, Sorry about that. Um, let's get to it. Let's make them bigger. So what do we have right here? So what is he asking for? He is saying, please, Judge, this was filed on January 19th at 5.04 p.m. And he's saying, respondent is Mr. Kyle. Sammy is, uh, we'll just say a caller of debt, but respondent is Mr. Kyle because she filed, she's the petitioner. He is the respondent. So what is this? What is this? So basically it's kind of like a recap on November 14th. She filed for divorce and stating the parties were married on or about August 25th, 2020. On January 10th, 2023, responded uh, Mr. Kyle filed his original answer in which he denied the existence of a marriage between parties. Now that was sealed, so I really couldn't get it. But anyway, we knew he was going to say, we're not married. He also say, he goes on to say, we were never ceremonially married. So there was no wedding. Um, at this issue, whether the parties are common law married, Sam alleges in her pleading that the parties are married. Mr. Kyle specifically denies that the parties were ever married. So he's like, look, man, we ain't ever been married because, you know, he said he would never get married. Um, Mr. Kyle would show the court that Adept is unable to demonstrate that the parties were formally married. So we know she can't demonstrate that they were formally married or common law married. OK, so now. He's bringing up this civil procedure. Rule 174B of the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure permits a trial court to order separate trials for any claims or issues in furtherance or com of convenience to avoid prejudice. So basically with that, that's a fancy way of saying we can't have a divorce trial if we were never married. OK, so let's not jump to divorce if we indeed were never married. And let me put this down to 230. Um, because that's the best um, scene. So what does he also what does he also st uh, reference? This Winfield v. Renfro. Okay, this is basically a um, Supreme Court hearing, and they made a rule. So what's the rule in Winford? In Winfield, the purported wife suit for divorce alleged that the common law marriage existed between the parties. Winfield v. Renfro, 821, da 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 da. That's the court case. Um, purported husband denied any marriage existed. So this is this is XQC and the debt back in the day. Okay. The suit involved not only whether the parties were married, but also the division of significant property. So this is a case that came before them. Um, it was purported husband, you know. Grandpa XQC appealed and asserted that the trial court denied him a trial by jury by conducting separate jury trials on the issues of marriage in a divorce. So basically he's saying, we just had a divorce trial. We never had the trial that we were married. Okay. Uh, the first court of appeals upheld the separate trials on the issues of common law marriage and the divorce. Okay. We're not going to read the rules. Um, a court in the Texas civil procedure law allows for separate trials of issues before different juries if the issues are distinct and separable. Okay, so now he's saying, are we married? And let's do, let's bust down our property. Okay, the court stated that the issues of marriage and divorce are distinct and separate issues, and therefore a trial court did not deprive purported husband of a right to a jury trial by birth bifurcating these issues bifurcating is a fancy word for breaking up similar to the winfield um the determination of the existence of a marriage in this case has the potential to dispose the divorce and the property questions all together so if we can prove that we were never married then there is no divorce case so that's what they're that's what they're going for rule uh blah 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 permits the court to bifurcate the issues, the claims related to marriage and divorce. So basically just cite more rules. Respondents request for bifurcation is sought to do justice to avoid prejudice and for the convenience of the courts and parties. This is, this is actually true. Uh, you don't want to have the divorce case without determining if you're married. Respondent requests the court to bifurcate the issues of common law marriage and for the court to hear and determine that the issue by separated trial prior to addressing any issues related to a divorce, including but not limited to the characterization 
and valuation of property in this case, okay? And what is he praying to? Just like a, a debt has to pray, Mr. Cow has to pray to the judge. Respondent prays that the court grants his motion to bifurcate the trial. Respondent prays that the court bif bifurcates the issue of common law marriage and orders that the issue of common law marriage be tried prior to any issue related to divorce, including but not limited to the characterization and valuation of property. Respondent prays for all relief to which he may be entitled to respectfully his lawyer. Oh my goodness, man. So now, basically, if you didn't get that, he's citing a, a historic trial of a guy trying to get common law marriage and which had the division of property and saying, hey, based on this case, he never had to uh, have the trial where um, that it was separate from the divorce. He went straight to a divorce trial when it should have been bifurcated and they needed to establish if he got married. But what's what's great about this trial, right? This, this is kind of like a Trojan horse. This is the Trojan horse. And I caught it because I actually looked up the trial. I looked it up. Winfred versus Renfro. Okay. And the rule of common law marriage is statutory requirement of representing the others and synonymous that the judicial law requires holding to the public. Holding out may establish the conduct, actions, and parties. Spoken words are not necessary to establish representation to the husband and wife. Who cares about all that jibber jabber? But what you want to go down to is this conclusion because this is important. This is very important. And what makes it so important is I'll make it bigger. Um, the language that's in it, right? So what's the conclusion? Court reversed the judgment. Okay, so hey, you're no longer married. Finding that the omission of the word there or phrase in Texas, right? So basically it was like, hey, are you common law married? She was like, yeah, we common law married in Texas. Well, are you commonly law married in Texas? So from the jury instruction created an erroneous instruction consistent constitute era that was reasonably calculated to cause and probably did cause the rendition of an improper verdict. Additionally, the court found that the evidence was factually insufficient to support the holding out element of a common law marriage. You're like, what do you mean? This is, all, this is all not making sense. The court determined that it was against the great weight and sufficiency of evidence to conclude that the parties held themselves out as married in Texas on or about the date of their alleged marriage. The court remanded the cause for a new trial. Boom. So now the Trojan horse is that one, he didn't get his trial bifurcated, you know, this grandpa XQC. And at the time of the date where they married in Texas, which um, I believe not, I believe that was in Canada. So this may come up in a court case. This may not. I could, you know, look, I'm not a lawyer, but this is my interpretation of it. And we know it's not going to be good because now he has two trials and all she has to do is convince one judge that they were married. So I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to be following all of this marriage because people don't understand this is the biggest common law marriage in the history of the United States. And not too many people are covering it or talking about it. It's actually just getting swept under the rug, maybe because, you know, it's he's a creator. And if you bring attention to it, he gains more subscribers. But this is huge. This may actually get appealed to the Supreme Court, no lie. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.